setting up delivery and paying your freight forwarder. So using Shapiro's quote system, I'll be going through Shapiro's quote system live. After your quote is received and approved from Shapiro, you will send a payment through the link that they email you. Shapiro takes bank accounts and all U.S. major credit cards as payments. So let's take a look at their quote system and their back end, and we'll go from there together. I highly recommend using Shapiro for your freight forwarder. There will be a link to Shapiro in the useful links. Um, I've had bad experiences with DHL and UPS, specifically DHL. Um, I actually, one of the first orders that I ever had of private label products was delayed, damaged. Um, nobody called me back. It was awful. Um, and it was really their fault and they didn't want to do anything about it. It was so bad that I actually ended up bringing them a small claims court and winning a $3,500 settlement against them just for the shipping because they were awful. So it, Having a great uh, freight forwarder and a great relationship with a freight forwarder is really, really important in this business. And Shapiro is great all around. They keep you connected. They tell you constantly what's going on with your shipment. And they have a great back end. So let's take a look at the back end first. So this is my back end currently. I'm actually waiting on a shipment. Um, so it shows the shipment left around 416. Um, it was actually loaded on the boat at 421. It was shipping, and now it looks like the estimated date of arrival in Los Angeles is 5-14-2018. So then it has to go through customs. I'm hoping, really hoping that'll be like two or three days, and which it usually is, and then it'll be shipped to me. So if you look down, here's all my orders. Um, you'll see that there's pretty much a similarity in most of these times. Sometimes you'll get, um, you know, like this one actually is a rush shipment, so I'm going to ask them to do it immediately. Most of them are, you know, about 10 days after it arrives or 8 days after it arrives, um, and it's cleared customs, it gets shipped to you. But you have stuff like this where, you know, it arrived, it cleared customs three days later, it was at me the next day. That is definitely possible through Shapiro. Um, so my current shipment, as I said, is arriving 514, hoping to get that very quickly. Uh, now let's take a look at their quote system. So to access this quote system, once you've signed up with a Shapiro account, you'll have a representative. Every time that you want to do a new quote and get a new shipment through them, you just write your representative an email and say, hey, I'd like to do a new quote. You know, I'd like to get some shipment details. So we're going to do this together. Um, and we're just going to fill this out like this. Test. just in case they decide to go through. Now, um, your reference number will be on your Shapiro IDs once you've made a shipment. So you can find that, and here's your point of contact. This is gonna be your Shapiro representative. Currently, I use Betty, she's great. So we would go to next. And where are we shipping to? We're shipping to the US. And so go to next. How would you like to ship the cargo? Now, we've had discussions about this, Shipping the cargo by air or ocean really depends on the weight of the product. So if you're shipping something tiny, like uh, an iPhone cable, go by air. It's not going to cost a tremendous amount. Now, if you're shipping something even like 5,000 tubes of toothpaste, they might be a little heavier. Air is great and it comes very quickly, but it's very expensive. It's usually about three to five times the price of ocean shipping. So most of the times you're going to select ocean. And what are your INCO terms? So, they actually describe it really well here. EXW, your supplier's factory address, meaning they're picking up at the factory address. FCA, your supplier trucks to the port, but they handle the export clearance. FOB, means freight on board or origin port. They're picking up from the origin port. CIF is picking up from the destination port. Most of the time, anything that's shipped by ocean from suppliers is FOB. But you want to double check that with your supplier to be sure. So let's go to FOB, say Shanghai. Um, does your supplier have an export license? 
Most suppliers will, but you can contact your supplier and ask if you're unsure. Supplier name. Again, we're going to use test. Test.com. Test um, product commodity description. So let's take the example of the product I have coming in now, which is a microfiber car duster. It's one of the products I have in my line of my auto care, my auto care line. So I would say microfiber car duster with telescoping metal handle. You want to describe it as best as possible using the materials that are used. That will make it much easier and faster to clear customs. If I just wrote car duster without writing microfiber car duster, which I've done before and had issues with, it might get held up in customs, which it actually has. So your cargo ready date goes here. If you know your estimated ready date, you can put it in. I should say the 16th. Any deadlines for delivery? Yeah, I really want to have it in by the 14th, or I have to have it in by the 14th. Does your cargo contain batteries? No. Does your cargo contain any other hazardous materials? No. Are you shipping a full container? Now this one's important. Most of the time when you're starting out especially, you're definitely not going to be shipping a full container. A full container is a full shipping container, which is a lot of inventory. So most of the time you're going to click no here. Now if you are shipping a full container, you can click yes. When you start shipping full containers, this is the point where you can start negotiating these quotes really well. So let's say you ship a full container. Um, they might have given you a price that's a little over what you wanted to pay. You can give them a call and negotiate it because you're shipping a lot. Otherwise, when you're not shipping a full container, they're actually negotiating a rate of combining your shipment with other shipments coming in on a container. So you have a little less, a little less room to play around in the negotiation. So we go to next. Are you shipping pallets or cartons? Now this is something you're going to want to ask your manufacturer. Most of the time, if you're shipping over, say, 10 boxes, or over, say, 20 boxes, they're probably going to put it in um, pallets, meaning you'll have a wooden pallet on the bottom and the cartons above it. Now, if it's only, say, 10 boxes, it might be shipping in cartons. So we'll say cartons. So let's say we only have 10 cartons coming in. The weight for each carton in kilogram, which is 2.2 pounds US, let's say is 10. Let's say length in centimeters is 40 by 40 by 40. So here's your total cubic volume. And if you're shipping pallets, are they stackable? Another question you probably want to ask the supplier. Usually I put no here. Um, now where are they delivering to? They can deliver directly to an FBA fulfillment center for Amazon. Now, let's say you're delivering out of your own business. I mean, you're selling out of your own business. If you don't have a warehousing facility, like a storage facility, you're probably having it dropped at a residence. Even if you're having it dropped at your business, it's still going to be considered a residence because you don't have a loading dock. So, no matter what, even if you decide you only want to sell on Amazon, you don't want to sell anything through your own business, your first order should always be delivered to your residence or warehouse. Why? Because you want to inspect that order and make sure everything on that order is correct. After that, if you want to send it directly to Amazon through the FBA Fulfillment Center, go right ahead. But before that, always send it to your house or your warehouse or your business. Now for this purpose, let's say that you're selling through your business. It's your first order. You really want to check out how the product looks. You know, you got samples. They were great, but we want to make sure the first order is perfect. So we're going to, collect, we're going to select residence. From here, we're going to type in one, two, three, test lane. Um, city tester, state, New York, 598, USA. Cool. Would you like expedited trucking? So most of the trucks they're going to put you with make a few stops, and or you can have a uh, truck that's directly devoted to you. It will cost extra. Personally, um, I generally get my orders before 10 in the morning on the day they're delivering. I've never had an issue with this. If you're in a major city, I wouldn't worry about expedited trucking unless you really need it first stop. Um, is an appointment required? I always do an appointment because that way you know when they're coming. Will there be someone to unload the cargo? Yes. It may be you on the first order. Um, will lift gate or pallet jack? Most of the time it will be required to unload unless you have a true loading dock. Is there a loading dock? No. 
Um, is there any restrictions on the truck? So personally, my storage space actually has an eight foot um, restriction. Trucks can't be over eight feet. So because of that, I will put that there's a restriction on the truck um, to unload my delivery. Provide email contact for your delivery location. Normally it's gonna be your email. Because unless you have someone devoted at a shipment center or a warehouse, um, then you're gonna be the one handling the delivery. Even if you hire somebody else to do it. Uh, phone number. Okay. And we're going to go to next. Now here, how would you like to pay for your shipment and would you like insurance? I recommend always take the insurance. You never know what's going to happen. It could fall off the edge of a boat. And that's not even a joke. Like it really can happen. If you have the insurance, entire thing's covered. It doesn't cost that much more. It's a couple percent. It's totally worth it. So almost always here, I use a credit card. It is subject to a 3% processing fee. You can use a wire transfer. I find depending on what you're ordering, the credit card fee isn't going to be that much more than a wire transfer. And personally, I like American Express points, so I'll put it all in my Amex. Um, now, here you need to upload your commercial invoice and packing list. Your supplier is going to send that to you. Now, if they don't send that to you, it's something you have to have. So they should have sent you, um, you know, a quote for your order before this and a, um, a billing invoice. And then they should have sent you a commercial invoice and packing list of everything that will be in your shipment. You need to upload this right here. So just select the upload button, locate the file they sent from your supplier. If they didn't, email the supplier and get it and upload it right here. After you're done with that, you're going to press next. Let's talk duty. So in order to classify your shipment, you need to provide a detailed uh, description of your product. So as I said before, you gave a brief description. Now go a little more into detail. So if I said microfiber car duster with a telescoping handle, I'd say microfiber car duster used for removing dust and pollen oops, from cars comes in oops, a plastic storage, oops, storage bag with cleaning card insert. Made of chenilles, fiber, and stainless steel handle with foam grip. As much detail as you can go into here is great. Again, it just makes it go by customs a lot faster. Um, if you have a link to the product, if you're already selling it online, upload it right here. If you have a picture, even a picture from your manufacturer, Upload it right here. It makes it a lot easier. It'll really push it through customs. So, and there are taxes to do with your customs as well. So from here, we press next. And here they give you some basic information. And on your transit times, your value-based fees, which are not included in the quote, duties, taxes, insurance, credit card processing, how long it normally takes to cross the ocean. Um, and then when you're all ready, you press submit. And that's it. Um, since this is a test quote, I'm not going to submit it. But as you see, it's very easy to use. And also, if you ever get caught up, just like on American Express, but even better, Shapiro is fantastic. That's the reason I still use them. They're a little more expensive than DHL and UPS and the main suppliers for freight forwarding. But they're fantastic. They just do a great job every single time. They keep me in the loop. They ever have any issues, they're emailing me immediately. They get back to my emails immediately. We highly recommend that you stick with Shapiro for all your freight forwarding needs.